well. New wheel is on, or new tire. Minty, but they can't align the car until tomorrow, so I have a service loaner to take home. Yay! Also, uh, I think that's close enough. Yeah. I never pulled this up here, scraped my shit, so that's fun. Good job. Ooh. A little MDX action, let's go. So uh, yeah, the car's in the shop. It's um, so I had to replace the tire, obviously because you know blew out. But um, they didn't have time to do the alignment today, so they're gonna do that in the morning. So this is why I got this to drive home. Um, service loaner. So uh, other than that, though, everything else went smooth. Like the tire, I mean, obviously the tire went on fine. Um, they're gonna align it and find the issue because obviously there's a, a camber issue. So they're gonna find the issue and then um, hopefully fix it or tell me what I need to do to fix it. But um, hopefully that goes well. But yeah, I got this take home tonight. So um, it's better than nothing. One thing I really don't like about like modern Acura cars is the interiors. They're not the greatest. Um, I'd say like this car, even my RSX is like interior comes close. This is not good. They recently did a refresh, but this, oh man, this is not good. But um, yeah, bro, I'm starving. Let's go. This thing rides so clean though. Like it's so smooth compared to the RSX. The RSX would be like this, like boom, 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 boom. Oh, stiff ass coil. This thing is, oh my, I kind of wouldn't mind driving one of these every day. Not one of these, I'd probably get like an ILX or something, but not bad, man, not bad. Well, I don't mind it in the driveway, but it's just not the same. It's a little, a little bigger than the RSX. Oh man, I already missed the RSX. Well, time to take you back. It's been, uh, it's been fun. Okay, so I went ahead and picked up the car. Uh, I got my hair cut real quick. Um, so I ended up having to replace two tires instead of the one. I've got my paper right here. I'll show you exactly why. So, turns out, this right here are the alignment papers. So, front right is the one that blew. Look at how much the toe was off. Uh, it was off by 13 and a half millimeters. So, actually, they fixed it to uh, 0 0.1. Um, the left side was actually almost as worse as uh, it was over 9 millimeters off. And, obviously, they corrected it again. So I ended up needing two tires instead of one because the driver's side one was actually almost to the point that it was going to blow out. So I caught both of them in time before they actually blew. But yeah, look, 13 and a half off and 9.1 off. That is crazy. Now for the back, uh, they're fine. The backs are fine. Um, so yeah, this was, um, yeah. That's that's why that's why I went through that set of tires in wait, three months because I wow the whole alignment was just completely off it was screwed okay there's the old tire the OEM Type S wheel and so really this tire is still like brand new if you guys remember I when I first bought the car. I put brand new tires on the stock wheels and then like 
I don't know, two months later, I bought the wheels and new tires. So these kind of, I've only put like, you know, about a month on these. So they're still in really good shape, still brand new. I mean, I, I'm saving these for winter tires just in case I have to drive the car in the winter, which I'm pretty sure I will. Um, so these are pretty good backup winter tires and a wheel setup that I'm not afraid to get dirty because look at these, they're already pitting and they're, they've been on the car since 06. So if you buy wheels, say you buy wheels, keep your stocks and put some, uh, some good, like, I don't know, good shredded tires on it so that you have some, a winter setup or, you know, a setup you don't really care to get dirty or, um, I don't know. That's just something. So I'm glad I kept on a hold of these wheels so they actually have a use. Also, another thing is if they're the, around the same size or the same size, um, it's a better spare than using the donut, which is under there. So really, I could take the spare out and put this in. That way I have a full size spare. Something to think about. And the poor tire lettering. Yep, that lasted about as long as I expected it. Oh well, it's cool to try something new, but that's not it. If I were to do that again, I'd get the actual stick-ons and not markers. But if you look, it has like no camber now. Definitely definitely no camber so uh, I'd, I don't know tell from this angle there's no camber I mean there's point degree but you won't be able to notice it on camera I'd much rather have a proper alignment than run a lot of camber and have to replace the tire every two months so yeah, check out the cut. Fresh cut. That's really short. Mm, oh well. I'm actually waiting on a, a idle air control valve. I know a lot of RSX people run into this issue and I finally have where the idle and it's all over the place and it sticks and stuff like that. I know it's a very, very common issue in K series and RSXs and stuff. So I just, I got, I ordered one offline because AutoZone in like local places wanted like $200 for an OEM or something like that. So I just ordered off the line and uh, I'm gonna be replacing that soon. Uh, I don't think I'll make a video for it because it's honestly like really annoying process. But um, so what happens now is um, if you don't know what, what a bad uh, idler control valve does is, so say you're idling the car, you start it up, um, initially it will rev high because it's the warming up, but in the summertime, it shouldn't take, you know, that long to warm up to, uh, operating temp. So what happens is it'll stay at like 2000, maybe 1500, and that's still way too high for idle. It should be 800, 900 max. And what also happens is, um, when you're driving around, so you're coming, you're driving around, you're going to the gears say you go first to second when you hit second and put the clutch in to go to second the wherever you you know put the clutch in the rpm at will actually stick and it'll stick and stay there and it, it kind of it's kind of like a um a no lift shift um if you think about it but it's it's really not don't do it um <laughs> it's kind of funny but um also if you're rolling in third or whatever gear and you say it's a stop sign coming up. You put it in neutral and you want to roll. The RPMs will stay until the car comes to a complete stop. And then they'll they'll go back down to like a thousand. Which is still 1100 or something like that. It's still way too much. So that's basically an issue of a dirty or faulty idler control valve. I don't have an engine light on for a faulty one. So I don't know. I cleaned the one that's in there now. And it didn't do anything. So I'm just going to have to replace it and hope for the best. If that doesn't fix the issue, I don't know. That's literally like, <clears throat> that's the only thing I can think of. I don't have a vacuum leak. We've, you know, we've 
tested or we te like looked on the entire car, everything on the engine bay, spent hours and hours looking for a vacuum leak. I don't have a vacuum leak. <clears throat> that was like, that was like the one thing I thought it probably could have been since I don't have an engine light on for a faulty idle air control valve. But that's not it. I don't have a vacuum leak. So I don't know. Hopefully it fixes the issue. Anyways, I'll leave that back there. I'll deal with that later. But um, that was kind of an update video of the car. Really not a whole lot going on. I um, really after I get all of my fenders rolled because it still kind of rubs. So I really need to fix that. After I get that fixed, the idle fixed, um, I want to get an exhaust. However, the problem is the exhaust that I want. I'm not going to reveal the one I want, but the exhaust that I want is on back order for five months. So I might have to get something like a temporary kind of muffler um, for now and just go after the whole exhaust setup. Because what I want, I want a header, I want pretty much header and back all the way back. I want to do it right properly. So I can't really do that. It's all out of stock and on back order. Um, I, I maybe it's the EPA. I have no idea. COVID isn't really a thing anymore. People can't really use that as an excuse. So the I think it's probably the EPA cracking down on some of these uh, these tuner brands that make headers and emission modifications and stuff like that. So I don't know. Fingers crossed. Hopefully we get something soon about the RPM Act. Um, it's just getting kind of ridiculous. You can't even get a tuner for this now. It's all on back order and it's all inflated $1,500. So anyways, that's my TED Talk. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next time.